Welcome back to the little video series we have with Cassius's Fox Body Mustang. If you missed last week's episode, we got that aluminum exhaust on there and does it sound good. So now on this episode, as we promised, we're going to be tackling, you said the fuel system? The whole fuel system, yeah. Entire fuel system. Now what, do you, what exactly are you doing with the fuel system? So I'm removing the factory hard lines that I made some connections with to go to a braided line and I'm switching it all out to PTFE. Uh, the plan is to put the car on E85 and to make it safe and it doesn't smell and it won't permeate, we're switching it all to PTFE. Also, super important fact, if you are going to be using PTFE hose and fittings for your car, make sure you order PTFE hose and PTF fittings that are specific for PTF hose from Vibrant because the standard AN hose and fittings do not work with each other and vice versa. So they're very specific fittings, so make sure you order the right ones. All right, let's build. Let's do it. So the plan is the car currently um, has factory fuel lines mated to braided lines at the front. Um, it's not going to be enough for when I switch the car over to E85, so I'm going to be upgrading it to a dash 8 feed and a dash 6 return. So we have our feed, our return line in PTFE, as well as all the necessary hose ends to mate everything up. We have some O-ring adapters to switch the fuel rails over from dash 6 to dash 8, and as well for the fuel filter. We have our P-clamps to hold everything down, our nice billet line separators, and as well as some heat protectant to keep it away from the headers. Now, the biggest thing is you've never assembled PTFE. I have not. I've uh, dabbled in it maybe once or twice many, many years ago with power steering, but uh, never assembled ours. I'm really looking forward to it. And you worked at a shop. I did. I worked at a Mustang shop for over six years. It's crazy. You've never worked at PTFE. I have not, no. You're right. Well, we're going to do it. We're going to learn together. Let's get it done. So first thing we're going to get done is we're going to be installing some AN to ORB adapters. Uh, the car currently has dash six to dash six on the fuel rails already. So we are going to go over to the car and switch those out to an eight AN to a dash six ORB. But before we do that, we're going to install the fittings on our fuel filter. Uh, this is a dash 10 to dash eight. This will be on our feed for our fuel filter. Um, so we're going to get that installed. One thing that I like to do is use some sort of a lubricant on the fitting itself. That way it gets the O-ring and it prevents any sort of galling that could happen when installing it. Nothing too crazy. And we've got our fuel filter. So the nice thing about these is they do thread in quite easy with some sort of a lubricant. And this is machined already for the ORB. And we will grab our vibrant wrench. And that's it. Let's move over to the car. All right, so we've already removed the factory fuel lines on the car. They've already been evacuated of all the fuel. So first thing we're gonna do is get rid of this crossover on the back. Uh, so this is currently a dash six to dash six. We're gonna upgrade that to a dash eight. We've already gone ahead and mounted the regulator to the rail and this plug will be removed to switch over for the feed. So the feed will enter from this side, loop around, come out of the regulator on the bottom and we will install a cap on this end. So the nice thing about our vibrant AN wrench is that it does not gall up your hose ends. So even though they're being removed for the last time, this is something that can be put in the trailer as a spare. You never know when you might need another one or lend a hand at the track. So why not make it look good? gone ahead and removed our fuel line. So now we're gonna get these adapters out of the way. So while we get our adapters off, one thing you can see is that we're using a 6AN to 6AN coupler. So these are good because you can join, of course, two lines, which most people use them for. But the other good reason is that you can hard mount things like a fuel pressure regulator to your rail. So instead of you having a piece of line mounting this regulator with a bracket, you could simply use a six female to six female coupler and mount it right to your rail. So now that we've got our adapters all in the engine bay, we're gonna get the car up in the air and map out the fuel system. So the main reason why we're switching over the fuel system from a six to an eight feed is the car will be going on E85. E85 does need about 30% more fuel as well as the PTFE line is E85 and methanol safe. So let's get the car up in the air and start mapping it out. Yeah. 
All right, so we've got our initial parts here for the fuel system install. And I know what you're probably thinking, there's no way you'll need nearly this much fuel holes. You're right. This is our 150 foot roll. The reason why we got so much is I need to do the return on the car as well as a little trick I'll show you after with a overflow for the rad. So we have our dash eight feed, our six return, as well as our two hose ends, our 690 and an 890. And of course we can't forget our vibrant tools. So this is our hose shear. This is a game changer when it comes to cutting PTFE as well as our regular nylon braided hose. We have our cutting tape and we have our AN wrench. So let's get started. So we'll first cut our hose open carefully and make sure we don't nick the braid. So our hose does come with these really nice caps on the end and that keeps debris and uh, dust from getting inside of the hose as well as the ends from fraying and shipping. They also come with the cutting tape on them already. So, so first we're gonna do is we're gonna disassemble our PTFE hose end. And as you can see, not the same as a traditional hose end. You have the outside part of the hose end, you have the olive, and you have the collar. So what we're first gonna do is unwrap the cutting tape that came in the box. It is okay to leave this clear tape on for the uh, this to slide over, but you do wanna remove it after. Might be a little tight, but went on no problem. All right, so we won't be needing our cutting shears right away because we're gonna work on our feed line at the back of the car first. So we have our collar slipped on and what you wanna do is get a little screwdriver in between the outside braid. Careful not to deform the PTFE too much because you will have some leakage issues after. What we wanna do is slide our olive over as much as we can and we'll walk over to the vise. We can't forget our vibrant magnetic vise jaws. So the beauty of these vise jaws is that you're not gonna mar your hose end when you're assembling it, and it gives you placement to install it on either end, as well as the top and the bottom. So I like to shift it over to the end, that way the hose can pass through the vise when installing it. So we have our olive pushed into our PTFE, so what I like to do is with a little bit of force, force it down. As you can see, the PTFE braid on the inside is pushed in, and that's from pushing it out with the screwdriver. So just go around with the screwdriver, push it around, and it's all uniform on the inside. Next, what I will do is I will get some lubricant on our hose end. Do this for two reasons. One is it slides into the PTFE liner a lot easier, as well as these threads won't get galled up when you're installing it. So next, we'll put our hose into our vice jaws. You want to install the hose end into the vice jaws. It's a little bit sticking up, and the reason you do that is when you tighten the hose end down, it won't stop and then hit the vice jaws, and then you'll end up galling it. So that will push down into that. And we start to turn. Same thing with our wrench. We want to make sure that it's not lower than the top part of the hose end, or else you'll get that bottom part. So. Take off our AN wrench, and you want to have just a little gap. I personally like to line up the flats, and our hose is installed. Let's move over to the car. All right, so we are underneath the beast, as they say. As you can see, it is pretty dusty and dirty because I actually drive the car on the street, so it's got its fair share of uh, Mississauga Road dust on it. So uh, we've already gone ahead and installed our fuel cell. Uh, kind of the first time I'm mentioning it, so the stock tank is gone. We are installing a fuel cell instead. It is a 12-gallon cell with the pump inside. With the pump inside the cell, we have to, of course, get the fuel out of the car. So we've already gone and installed our Dash 8 90-degree bulkhead, our Dash 6 90-degree bulkhead, as well as our vent for our fuel cell. So this is our fuel cell fitting. The fuel cell already has a rollover valve pre-installed inside of it. So what this does now is this is a fuel cell fitting from us that converts it over to a barb. So we've gone and installed a filter on the other end just to allow that cell to vent and breathe. Good thing is if this gets dirty or grimy with rubber or road debris, it's very easy to clean. So one thing with our PTFE hose ends is because they don't swivel, you have to make sure that you clock your 
hose end before you install it on the car. Because this is the first run and because the hose of course has its natural coil, I want it to run underneath the car like this. So we've already installed it on the perfect spot. So we're gonna go ahead and get this over to our fuel filter. So our hose is installed on our fuel filter now. We're gonna leave this loose until we get our return on, but both of these are gonna run along the frame rail up to the front of the motor. So what I like to do is leave them loose. That way you can get them both together and we'll run them along the frame rail with our P-clamps and that's our next step. So we're gonna move on to our return line now. We're gonna get this prepped for the hose end install. As you can see, of course, it is 150 feet. So we're gonna cut it down. We've measured out 20. So we're gonna grab our clear adhesive tape, self-adhesive tape. The nice thing with this tape is it does not adhere to the nylon braid itself. It only adheres to itself, hence its name. The nice thing about this is that when you pull this off, it's not going to fray the nylon. So we have that on. I'm gonna grab our vibrant hose shears. As we pick up our line, you can see now we have a clean, uniform cut. Once we pull off that tape, it'll be ready for the hose end. All right, so we have started running our fuel lines and we're currently at the front of the car. And when assembling fuel lines, you will notice, of course, one line has to be attached to your pump or your regulator. The other line has to be to the chassis and one you'll be able to do on the bench, one you won't. So this line here, of course, is already tied to our frame rail and there's no way to obviously put this on a bench. So I'm gonna show you how to install this on the car. So we've already gone ahead and then put our B-nut on. We've already opened up our line. So we have our olive. I'm gonna put that on the hose. Make sure that it is flush with the top groove and we will pull that up, make sure it's snug, and we will grab our A-nut. What we'll do is we will push that inside of the hose end. You'll feel it go into the PTFE liner. And I always like to start threading it by hand because then you know that it's not gonna bind up. Now the main thing as well with PTFE is that the hose ends do not swivel. So you have to match your angle before you lock it down. You can go after and turn it, but it's nice to get it all in one shot. So I already know the way that this line is gonna root. My regulator is facing down, so I will need the end of this to be that way. That way I have clearance. So now that we've already engaged a couple of threads, I will grab two wrenches. One will be a simple adjustable. You don't need too much pressure. You don't wanna to put too much pressure on the B-nut either, because then if it's actually too tight, it can stop it from engaging. We'll grab our vibrant adjustable AN wrench, lock that down. And essentially we'll be using our adjustable as our vise. So it will hold that like that and start spinning. As you can see, this started to move. So what I'll do is I'll back it off slightly, reposition it, and go back to locking it down. And now that we're done, we have a beautiful scratch-free Hose in. Let's go up to the top and connect it to the regulator. So now we're back under the hood. As you can see, we have the hose end ready to go to the bottom of our regulator. And the 30 degree hose end is nice because if I had gone straight down, I would have came right in contact with our thermostat housing. So the 30 degree is gonna move that away just slightly and give us the clearance that we need. Get the proper angle, make sure it's away from everything. We'll grab our wrench. We'll snug that up. You don't wanna over tighten your AN fittings because the 37 degree conical seat, if you go too tight, you'll actually squash that down and cause leaks. So just enough. And now our engine bay fuel plumbing is done. So we have our feed coming to the driver's side of the rail. It loops around back with a dash eight PTFE as well, back into our rail, to our regulator and down for our return. Once we get the car back up in the air, we can go over the way that all the fuel lines were ran. So we come out of the spare tire well where the fuel cell is mounted, and we have our dash eight feed and our dash six return using bulkheads. They run along the frame rail with our P clamps into our fuel filter. So I want it to be a little fancy and not use zip ties, and I used our stepped billet line separators. 
So we come down the fuel rail, around from the exhaust to make sure we keep it away from the heat, through the floor, around the subframe connector, and along our frame rail on this side here. Again, using our billet line separators to make sure it keeps them away from everything and nice and safe. Up and around our wheel well, tucked all nice and tight up against the frame, and it loops up to our engine bay. Normally underneath the hood of a car, you would see your radiator overflow tank. Mine is actually mounted in the back, and I'll give you an idea as to why. When it comes to drag racing, water and antifreeze are gonna be your worst nightmare. They're gonna pull you off the track if you're leaking any kind of coolant, and if you're going down track and you happen to overheat the car, maybe you blow a head gasket, you're gonna have antifreeze everywhere, right over your tires, spin the car out. So what I've actually done is I've taken a NPT to dash four adapter right off of my radiator. I've ran a dash four line up to a dash four to dash six joiner. And we've actually run a dash six line all the way down the side of the car, along the frame rail to keep it away from everything, loop it away from the exhaust, and all the way back here to our universal radiator overflow. It's behind the tires, so if the car overheats for any reason, I blow a head gasket or anything bad could possibly happen, it's gonna be away from me wiping out the car. All right, let's bring this car down and get it loaded up on the trailer and get it over to the body shop. The car is gone. I took it over to the body shop. It's gonna get a nice wax, buff, detail, polish the wheels, touch-ups here and there, but. Painting the underside of the hood? I just had the hood got done too, yeah. Yeah, because I'm sure the audience is probably wondering like, why is that like an old red? Yeah, that was an afterthought, but it's good now. Yeah, no, I can't wait to see it. Now that it's all done, what did you, uh, what was your experience like with the PTFE hose and fittings? It was easy. Um, it was not as hard as some people make it out to be. Um, I actually prefer installing it over the regular nylon braided because it, it goes together nice and easy. Um, the line itself isn't nearly as flexible, but once you make sure you're rooting it away from the exhaust and the sharp parts of the car, it's fine. Most exciting part is now you can run E85, no, no e stress. E85, methanol, alcohol, M1, you name it. I don't yeah. have to worry about anything. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, why are you rushing to get the car done? We are going to Riverside Chattanooga this weekend. Yep, that's right. So if you guys want to actually hear and see the car in person, uh, I'm sure Cash is going to be bombing the streets of Chattanooga, but <laughs> Uh, it's going to be on display and I'm sure he's going to fire it up because the car's going to be outside. If you guys want to hear it, see it in person. It's going to be at the Vibrant booth. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be on the Vibrant booth. We're going to be selling our limited edition merch. It's only available, not online. It's only available if we ever go to shows. So if you guys are really interested, you see some of the stuff we wear in the videos, make sure to come out to the Riverside Chattanooga in Tennessee. Anyways, uh, we're going to wrap it up right there. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment below if you have any questions. Uh, we can talk about fuel delivery or PTFEs with you guys if you want. We're always available. Uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. See you later.